What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Wrestling with Jesse Rosinski. It's another... Yeah, I'm in a good mood for this one. I'm chipper for this one. I know, I don't know. What else is new? You've heard me when I've been angry. Go back and watch Justin's Wrestling Roulette. Sorry about the chair. Or episodes with Justin, because we've heard me completely go off the rails on some of them. But what a fucking night it was, Charlotte, at the Spectrum Center on Saturday for the one and only NXT Vengeance Day. See, look, the TV's even cooperating for all of us as of right now. I shouldn't have said that, but there's some knocking on wood and praying that, you know, it doesn't screw up. But it was such, you know, a good event to be at live. I wish I remembered to bring the ECW championship. Yeah, so I could have that because there was old tag titles, 24-7 title right next to me. There was a lot of Undertaker commemorative that some guy walked by me with. Like, there were some really good ones I wish I remembered to bring that. Did not see. You know. I wish I would have remembered. Let's just leave it at that. See? Text comes in. Train of thought. Gone. But there was a lot of good ones. A lot of classics. of Ooh. 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 They were all over me and conveniently, as we all saw, if anyone follows yeah, the Wrestling Ski Twitter page, there was a guy next to me. Let me take pictures with the 24-7 championship. So I'm going to claim I was 24-7 champion for about 20 seconds. I mean, screw it. Everyone else was. Gronk was. I'm going to claim it, but hell of a good job. I thought they did a really good job with it all, and the crowd was really, really on. We were on fire for most of the night. You could hear when it was only there and it wasn't on fire. But again, not every match is going to, you know, win, you know, in everyone's heart. But Hannah thought it was great. It was her first ever show. Now she says she wants to go to a main roster one or anything, and she can't wait to go back to it because she had a lot more fun than she thought. I told her live wrestling shows, believe it or not, they are fantastic. And Yeah. Normally the crowd's always in it again. It's been weird on TV where you're going, I think they like it. And people there are going, what? Oh, it was loud in here. We just couldn't tell. But it was great there for the most part. I count at least 33 times that I saw me on camera. I was right there at the beginning after the women's tag match, I believe, holding my phone and a beer next to the guy holding 24-7 title. And then clear as day, clear as shit. Right after Roxanne made the pin to retain popped right up to me, Hannah, and the guy holding the 24-7 championship, which was really cool. Otherwise, you saw my flashlight just because, well, everyone's like, where are you? It was the easiest way to make it happen. But great thing. You know, really, really good. The dude next to me was outstanding. It was a great crowd. We had a good time. And I'm even going to say something nice about Charlotte. The performer, not the city, because I like Charlotte. Anyone that actually... Talks to me in real life. Like, I don't mind. I hate big cities, but I don't mind uptown Charlotte. You know, it's clean. There's a lot of stuff to do in a very small amount of space, which is good. You don't get that in a lot of places. Yeah, you don't got to worry about, you know, crime and all that. You know, it's walking distance everywhere. Parking sucks because it's all in garages mostly, but, you know, you can deal with that. It was a hell of a good time. If you've never been to Charlotte, I recommend going. But Charlotte Flair loved the promo at the beginning. It was a good thing. To do, I thought, you know, it was, it was fitting. It was either going to be her or her dad. We all knew it. They got her to do it. Made more sense. As, you know, she's still on the active roster. She's the champion. Made more sense. Now, how you feel about her to that one, because of where we were, made sense. Her doing that over her being at the actual show, to me at least, because of where she, you know, started down there. So that was really a nice touch. And by the way, shout out to Shawn Michaels. He'll never see this. But the moment before the show started with him doing the, you know, giving us a, we got two words for you and a we are NXT and did that whole thing. As weird as it is to see him in a suit. I'll never get used to that. You know, with the cowboy hat on still, don't worry, that's still there. But that was really a special moment. Then air it. If you follow, if you go on Twitter, wrestling ski, it's there. I was nice enough to upload it so people could see it. Yeah. And no one follows the Twitter really. So not like I'm letting a genie out of, a bottle, but it was a really good show. It was great. Charlotte's thing did it. And they started off, I'm going to say, with the best match of the whole entire night, which is why we could stay. And still, NXT North American champion, Wes Lee. Him and Dijak tore the, you know, absolutely tore it down. In my opinion, everyone around us, like that was the most anyone was, you know, the whole crowd was in that match. And that's a great thing, especially with all the, you know, flack we've heard. 
people give Wesley, you know, he's too small, he's too this, he's too that. We've all heard it. He went out there and he tore it down with them. And it was the match of the night. I don't care what you say. We, you could tell me what you thought the match of the night was, obviously, in the comments. We could have a conversation about that. But that was match of the night, stole the show. The crowd was on fire during it. And I went back, obviously, and watched it, you know, from everyone's perspective, which is why I'm just getting to this now on Tuesday instead of Monday or Sunday. I couldn't do it Sunday because I was driving back. And I wanted to watch it first. And you know, it was really good from y'all's perspective, you know, too. So I really... I'm glad I got to do that. I just didn't want to go and talk about what I saw. I wanted to actually at least know what they showed because you're watching the ring more than you're looking up at the screen to see what they're covering. Yeah. On Peacock, but it was so good. And they told such a great story throughout the whole thing. And it showed what they both can do. I already knew what they all could do. A lot of us knew what they could both do. I'm still thinking it should be criminal for Vince to waste Dijak under a mask in retribution or whatever the hell that was called anymore. You know, for that long and then keeping him T-bar for forever, like that was god awful to waste his talent like that. But false finishes, action, got to see a great story between the two of them. And we got to see the you know story of Tony D and Stack shoving Wesley out of the way, taking this, you know, moonsault. At least I think it was moonsault from Dijak off the top rope through them. So that carries that on, whether or not they face each other, decide who's gonna go out and stand and deliver in Los Angeles, or you know, they just go at each other, and Wes gets someone new. I'm really intrigued to see what they do that, but it did keep that going, which is good. Again, stories, you know, being told for longer than five minutes, I enjoy them, and they did a good, and I do find it really funny, though. One thing, Booker T finally mentioned street justice during that match, and suddenly there's Tony D and Stax to shove, to shove uh, Wes out of the way in that chair with the broom holding him in place. I just found that to be... Uh, Kind of a, kind of amazing that they mentioned street justice and here's the dawn to shove him out of the way. So good job on that. Great timing on that and that finger on Dijak. Uh, yeah. I swear I still heard him, you know, blurt out a little and reach for his hand right when it happened. Looking at it live, but damn, that was good. But that was the follow that moment of the night. Everyone wants to have that follow that. You know, moment, I think if we go back to NXT TakeOver Brooklyn, the first time where you see Triple H, you know, they did the WWE 24, whatever the hell they did. You know, I told you guys to go out there and kill, you know, steal the show. And then the main roster had to go and follow that, which was very hard because they absolutely killed it. If you didn't see the original Brooklyn TakeOver, please watch it. That shit was good. But that was a super follow that. Again, if you guys had a different one that you're picking, you know, to be that moment of the night, feel free to comment. Let me know, you know, because... Everyone's different, but from just watching it and then the crowd, we were hot for that one. Everyone was in that one, and that's what you really want, especially as a performer, to have everyone right there eating every moment of it. That's fantastic. That was a good match. And, you know, sadly, I don't think anyone else compared. There are people that, you know, everyone else still had good matches, but that one went out there and stole it, which I'm glad to see that they did. Good for them. You know, they both needed that moment. They both deserve that moment, especially as we all figured once Wes's partner, you know, Nash Carter got fired because of everything that we wouldn't see him do anything. And I don't think he would have done anything under Vince, but here we are. And Triple H is using him and using him well. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. So good to them. Uh, Fallon Henley and Keanu James are the new NXT women's tag team champions after defeating Katana Chance and Caden Carter. And Caden came right down the aisle. Like a few people from me didn't even realize until suddenly like, ah. in my peripheral, she went through the people. That was pretty cool. Hannah enjoyed it. And I thought they put together a good match. You know, it's the greatest thing ever. No, but they put on a good one and it was entertaining. I just didn't see that one coming. And I couldn't clearly see, because I'm blind, even with these, Keanu holding her legs down right there. Meant I wasn't looking there. But, you know, to hold the got the title, so I don't know what that's going to lead to between them, a rematch, Fallon and Keanu falling apart, Fallon turning heel, you know, whatever the hell they're going to do with all of it, but I honestly didn't see that coming, so uh, you know, maybe it's a way to get Katana and Caden up to the main roster or something, you know, give the women's tag division, like an actual tag team to be in there, which there aren't too many, so it'd be a good change of pace. I have no idea, but I never see, I didn't put two and two together, 
you know, because I wasn't obviously listening when I was there. And then I watched it back and them talking about how many, because I didn't, I only heard the pre-match stuff there. I didn't hear commentary, obviously. So I didn't hear them talking about them being the longest reigning, you know, I mean, tag champions in the whole entire company's history, you know, main roster, NXT, anything. So it makes more sense that they're not anymore, but didn't even notice that. Didn't have the thought going into it, which... You know, it's cool to at least get them to do that because they were trying for so long to get, you know, the titles. And they finally did it and, you know, held on to them for a while. And again, they need actual tag teams on the main roster. They're not doing much with any of that, which has been a problem. If they go up, that makes sense. We'll see if they do it. I'm sure there's going to be a rematch, but them going up over Fallon and Kiana makes way more sense. So if that's it, they're finally getting the call to be a team there. That makes sense. And hopefully they get more. You know, they aren't just thrown together randomly like they all pretty much are. So we can actually have a real women's tag division because I thought they'd been kind of lacking on all of that. But it'd just be me. People tell me I'm grumpy all the time. Sure I am. But still a good match. And I want to see where it's going with that forward. Because again, there's a lot of things they could do, but the women's tag division needs help on the main roster. So another actual team that's a real team and been a team for years would make sense and help it because it needs it. I don't care what you say. I will argue on that one. That thing has been garbage. Uh, Carmelo Hayes defeated Trick Williams with, you know, with Trick Williams defeated Apollo Crews in a two out of three falls match. The only thing I didn't see happening was it only going to two falls and Apollo getting shut out. But I was glad to see Trick only get involved once. He sure ripped that turnbuckle cover off real quick. Which, you know, they normally do. There's the untying and all that. That was fast. So I didn't like that part, but I'm only doing that. That was great. Uh, and I'm not complaining because I thought they put together a good match. By the way, Carmelo's trunks were not that blue in person. But, you know, they put together a good match. It was the match that we thought it was going to be. I just thought it was going to go to three falls, which would have, you know, stole it even better. But they put together a good one, and we got a definitive answer at the end, which is the big one. Now, you know, you got them both. You got them to tap out to a cross face, and then you got them at the end. So there was definitive. It was two falls to none. No question he was going to be the guy for Braun, which we all thought he was going to be. So I'm not mad about that at all. We got to see Dabakato come back and attack Apollo after, which means now we know where Apollo is going next. And, you know, if he stays down there after that, he, however they do it, you know, the artist formerly known as Commander Aziz, you know, he's Dabakato, then he was Commander Aziz, now he's Dabakato. You know, all of that stuff, but it gave him what they needed. And now Apollo's going somewhere. And that guy right there, if you're watching this, if not, Paul, you know, that'd be Hermelo Hayes is going against Braun definitively. No questions asked, which is what they needed going into. And I think that's going to be a great match. Uh, do I think, you know, I don't have a thought. It would make sense at least for him to, you know, be the guy. And now they'll get a while, a lot of weeks to work together, to build, to stand and deliver. And yeah, you know, he'll be right there with him all the time. Every week, I'm sure they're going to have Carmelo and yeah. You know, Braun doing stuff to build towards it, which can help improve him as he's in that spotlight. And I think he's really good, Carmelo. Do I know if the, you know, I'm not sold that he's 100% ready to be the guy yet? Um, again, just don't know. You guys can have an opinion. That's great. And I respect everyone's opinion. Let me know what it is in the comments. Tell me. You know, I just, I'm not sure if it's time yet. He's great. And he's probably the only one that's really shined out of all of this compared to, you know, a lot of the roster. He's always, you know, been in the spotlight and having things. So he's definitely the most ready to be the one. I'm just not sure if he's there yet. We will see how the weeks go on, but he is the most logical choice to be next in line because really who have they built, you know, otherwise fully. You know, there's really no one else. So got to see how it works out, but good match. Just wish it would have went to three falls just to make it that much better for the crowd and for everyone involved. Again, I could be wrong. You could tell me I'm wrong. I accept this criticism. But good stuff. No questions asked. And I didn't have to hear Trick Williams the whole time, which is better. And he only did one thing, which is phenomenal, because normally it's a bunch of things. So good on that. Gallus is the new NXT Tag Team Champions, defeating the New Day pretty deadly in Chase U. And I thought they put together a good match there. Everyone got their moments, and it was the right call. Again, they were on. You know, it looked like they were on a roll until all the visa stuff happened. You know, with a lot of people, and having them do it made 
you know, sense. If anyone was going to do it, really, as long as it wasn't pretty deadly, I didn't care. But it just leaves the big question of what do they do with the Dune Day now? Are they going to be at Stand and Deliver trying to get the titles back? Or are they going to go and try to, you know, build them up for something on the main roster to have a WrestleMania match and everything? Because I don't, because it's, you know, WrestleMania week. I don't see it being possible that the New Day isn't used at either of them. And but it's just hard because they haven't been on the main roster. It's like, what do they really build going towards that? You know, they can make some big fatal four way to get everyone on the show. We've seen it enough, you know, and it would make sense. But I don't know. I'm trying to figure out that one. That's the big question coming out of it all. Gallus was, you know, deserving. Everyone got their thing. But what do they do with the new day? Are they going to do stand and deliver? Are they going to be at WrestleMania and just throw them into something here in the next couple of weeks? You know, make it make sense because they weren't really, you know, lighting the world on fire before they went down to NXT. So I'm really confused. Intrigued. I'll go with intrigued to figure out what they're going to do with that just because. But time will tell. I just hope it's not just something thrown together just to get people on there because I just don't see the point in doing that. No. We'll see. Yeah, the Usos and all that. Are they going to split the titles, defend them both? I mean, who knows what they're going to do? But the moral of the story is pretty deadly. Did not win. So it was a moral victory for me. And that's all that matters. I like good moral victories. And my head didn't have to hurt when we left. But oh my God, the heat on pretty deadly the whole time. And that was real. So thank you, Charlotte. That was really real. I, I didn't notice it picked up as much. For people around me were all on all kinds of shit. And they could hear for very long around me. Like, that was cool. Thank you for hating them as much as me. Respect them in the ring. Character just makes me want to put my head through a wall. And I actually am capable of doing that. So let's not make me want to do that. Roxanne Perez, still the NXT Women's Champion, obviously. Everyone saw that going. I'm going to say that, you know, it wasn't a bad match. Uh, and they put together, you know, a good story to make Roxanne look good. And that was the important thing going forward. You know, after she had to get the title the way she did, and they just had Mandy drop it and then fired her, you know, there's all of that. And, you know, them being the next, you know, wants to go against her for the title made sense, just in a way. I guess Zoe's probably going to be the next one. It just makes sense for her to be the one, especially as they made her look so good at the Rumble compared to Roxanne. So I think that's how it's going to go. But I did what I had to do. I was on the match a lot on camera with my flashlight going there. You know, and we all knew Roxanne was going to win. Yeah, that was the thing. And they made her look good for the most part. Accomplished the mission, everyone got their spots in, and that's what we need going forward because I'm pretty sure, again, we can all agree it's going to be Zoe going into stand and deliver. Kind of say that pop rocks to Gigi outside the ring. That was a thud. That sounded good over, a, you know, a few rows up across from it right there on the hard camera. That two rows up from the hard camera, whatever. But that was a hell of loud. And you can clearly see me and Hannah standing next to the 24 7 title right after it's over. But yeah, there was awkwardness between G, you know, Gigi and JC when they got in the ring with each other. There was. I don't care who you are, how you've been a fan of them. They were really awkward. You know, it happens. Especially when they've been teaming together. I don't know. Like it's normally they mix together against each other. It just felt weird to me with some of the stuff watching it back. It solidified that thought. But who knows if they're going to split them up or if that's their way to get them up to the main roster. You know, and they could have the team, you know, vanish for a little bit, team up together again, go on their way. You know, that completely makes sense. So we'll see how they do it. Again, wasn't the greatest thing, but didn't suck. So we'll see what they do with them going forward. We all knew what was going to happen. So, I mean, we all had low expectations going into it regardless, just the way it is. Which gets us to my first ever steel cage match in person. With Braun Breaker successfully defending the NXT Championship against Grayson Waller. I told you I didn't think he was ready and they were going to do it. They didn't. Sorry, Carmelo and Braun just made way more sense. And people absolutely hated him. Like, that's all I heard, especially after the cameras turned off. He got nothing but just hate. Apparently, all the people that liked him were out of the building already because he was just getting stuff screamed at him the whole whole time. Uh, but only pinfall submission ending the match. It's a good thing with no escape. Waller wearing the chain mail on his head on the way to the ring like Scott would, you know, his uncle. A nice touch that they add to it, like Seth wearing Dusty's, you know, polka dots and all that. Just one of those little wrinkles that adds to it. 
and we all enjoy it. Get some a little more heat, but it's done good and it was enjoyable. Getting Braun before the cage expected, but it made them actually both look good because he got Braun. Braun got him before they got in there. Waller doing what I call the dog pisser towards Braun while he was on the ground. That was funny. The barking like a chihuahua. Those little things I enjoy. Taking everything that Braun does and turning it against him. You know, it's humorous little stuff, which means he gets it. I just don't think he's ready yet. I said that clear as day. His character pisses me off. It's what he's supposed to do. I just don't think he's properly to the point yet. And it set up Mello and Braun for stand and deliver like we all thought. Now, who's going to win it again? I have no idea. I'll let you know soon. I want to see how they play it all out going into it. And where Carmelo goes, because I don't think he's like there, there yet. But where else can he go if he loses to him? Now, do they call him up before Braun, which I don't see? You know, it's, it's one of those, because obviously Braun's going to be the one to go up before Mello, because I think Mello needs the championship reign before he goes up. You know, to prove that he could do all that. I think we can all agree on that. If we can't, again, tell me what you think. But I think it just makes sense, you know, all in all. To give him a good title run with, you know, the main championship to see what he could do with everybody with that before giving him, you know, send him up to the main roster with the way they're using people right now. I just think it's better. So we'll see. But I overall enjoyed the night and thought they absolutely did a great job in person for the first time, you know, in front of a crowd outside of Florida in years. And, you know, there's some awkwardness in the women's title match, like I said, but it was expected. And I mean, I always just expect awkwardness at some point during you know, most matches, depending on who's in it, just because, especially in triple threats, you know, something's off by a tenth of a second, still looks weird. So, you know, there was that. And I didn't expect the women's tag team title thing, just because, you know. But if you think about it, and then possibly going to the main roster, it actually does kind of make sense. So it's one of those, I didn't see it. But I'm not completely, you know, miserable because of it, because it'll get, you know, give them a chance to go up to the main roster because they proved what they could do with it, even though there wasn't a lot. You know, big matches in there and stuff. But again, look what they had to work with. But they did good. They worked good together. They're an actual team. There aren't too fucking many of them on the main roster or anywhere that aren't just thrown together. So it would make sense. We'll see if they do it. But again, them mentioning them being the long strand champion so much on commentary. It all made a lot more sense when I got to listen to it earlier today. And I'm excited to see what they do going forward towards Stand and Deliver. Because again, they got a lot of things. The right people are in place to do a lot of things. It's just how do they do it? How do they build them? Who comes out? You know, because there's a bunch of weeks to figure that out. And I want to see what the build's like. That's the important thing to me. How do they build them towards stand and deliver? And we will, t you know, find out. But thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Don't forget, available YouTube, Rumble, Apple, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio. You know, please share it to death when you see it. And until next time, peace. I'm out. Deuces. Night. Hey.